Hey everybody, happy Monday. It is Eric with Rocket HTV session 72. And tonight we're working on an Ertl slash DCP grain truck. We're gonna mount the bed on it, get it all ready to rock and roll for our client I've got hooked up on this. And that'll be pretty cool. Hey, we got Scott in the house, good to see you. And uh, here we go, this is actually um, what I'm doing here, making one of these. And sorry the light's all weird, but anyway. We got Steve in the house, good to see you. Quentin's here, hello Quentin, haven't seen you around in a while, nice to have you. Chris is here, and Chris is about ready to come to the States and chop silage, I imagine. Dustin is here, good to see you Dustin, how is everything, hope you're well. Hope all of you had a good Easter, however you celebrated, I certainly did. Uh, that was a good one, I gotta tell you, I ain't gonna lie, that was good. Anyways, uh, while we're getting warmed up here, we got a few minutes to kill. I had an impromptu project over the weekend. I screwed up. I hate oil-based paint just because it's it's just terrible to clean up. So I bought this paint for another for a home improvement project on Saturday, and I, it, when I went to go clean up my brush, I'm like, oh crap, this is uh, <laughs> this is oil-based. This sucks. So I thought, well, I've been wanting to paint the shop, so I painted my shop floor. As you can tell, I got. I started doing two coats over here and then behind me down here, two coats and you can see and then I kind of thought, uh oh, I don't want to buy another gallon of this, I'm running out. So <laughs> you can see, pretty obvious here, I need to put another coat over about half of it. Oh well, that's all good. But I love, if I had a couple guys say, why do you like all the white? Um, I just I like how the light reflects off the ceiling and the floor and it's just bright in here. Uh, that's the whole reason everything's white is because I just wanted it really bright. I, my wife, she's like, well, I need sunglasses in here. And I said, yeah, if you're not, it feels like I'm standing on the surface of the sun and that's what I want. So I just wanted it really bright in here because it makes me happy. That's it. So Dustin's playing with his new pickup. That's awesome. And Mark is in the house. Good to see you, Mark. A couple more minutes here. Here's a little something, something else that I'll share with you guys. I got to unplug here. I got my phone charged dip. Um, this is how I store stuff, uh, like pipes and tubes and things. I, I hate all this this plastic, you know, the styrene rod, you got brass rod, round rod, I got files in there. But anyways, I had all this, I had some PVC left over, so I started marking them with tape, and then I ran out of colors of tape, and I thought, I don't have 92,000 leftover cans of paint, so I found more pipe, and this is how I've been storing you know, odd things are kind of out of the way here. I really kind of dig this setup. Um, now I got, you know, angle rod and some other brass rod and other blah. So anyways, that's a, that might help some of you guys. And I, I like it colored, so I just grab it and then I know what I'm doing. I can grab it in a second. Okay, Kyler's in the house from Nebraska. Good to see you, Kyler. We have Brent. Hey there, how are you doing? Uh, I got you guys back in the cradle. That's good. And Keith is here. Welcome, Keith. All right. Kind of have my phone not set up perfectly tonight, but you should be able to see everything really well tonight. So oh, I'm going to bend you up just a little bit. There. How do you like that? Always something. All right. There we go. Now we're back. So yeah, we're going to work on a DCP slash Ertl International S series. I'm working on two of these for a guy. And I did two others, but I didn't like the grill. So I'm going to show you a couple of 3D, well, a 3D part that's new for me. I, it's not my design, it's somebody else's. But I'm going to show you how I went about that. And then I'll show you how I put this DCP, I'm just using DC, a DCP part is all it is. But I really like it, it works really well. Hey Vaughn, how are you? Good to see you. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to everybody else. All right, we got us a nice crowd. Well done. Okay, well, you know what time it is. It's 8, 8, 8.30. So we're going to get to cracking. Here we go. Hey everybody, it is Eric with Rockin' HTV Session 72. Tonight we're working on an Ertl slash DCP combination truck that is going to have an end dump box. Matter of fact, if you tuned into Rockin' HTV 71, you'll see how I made this particular box. Now it's all glued together, painted up, ready to go. 
How do you like that? So what we're going to do is I'm going to just describe how I got everything ready for it. And then if you want to make one yourself, you'll kind of know what I did. And then you can go about your own business on that. So that's how we'll get it done. And we had Michael stop in. Hey, Michael, Kenny's here. Carson, hello, hello. Welcome. Good to see you. And Simeon, hello from Idaho. I'll tell you what, that's good. I think I told you, Simeon, my son was up there cutting barley for Budweiser in Idaho. Last summer, he went on harvest, and that's where he finished his trail. Where was that? Gosh, that was a Mud Creek. Mud Creek. Yeah. Matt Smith, your parts are going to be in the mail tomorrow. I was actually out of town today. Took my daughter. <laughs> she had to go get a, a cast because when I took her skiing over spring break, the girl knows no speed limits, and uh, it was really... It was remarkable. She had no fear, and she was going faster than I was, and I've been doing this. So I, yeah, she was a first-timer. <laughs> and so we had to drive two and a half hours to the orthopedic surgeon and have her arm x-rayed, and everything's healing fine, put a cast on it. Okay, you're not here to hear about my daughter, are you? Okay, what we're going to do here is flip you around. And here we go. Look at there. All right. Look at that bird's-eye view. I got you way the heck up there. Oh, Angela's watching. Angela and Clayton. James are from Ontario. Good to see you. Jamie there. Jamie's watching from Ontario. Awesome. Okay. Looks like I got a mess here. Normally, I'd take a look at this before I uh, put you in there. Anyway, I'll quit talking to myself, too. How's that? Okay, so basically, we just have a stock Ertl. You can use any Ertl S-Series truck. This is all dry fit, by the way. Uh, so this is just a, a dry fit truck. Any Ertl S series will work for this. You'll notice that I uh, am reusing the stock windshield. And why am I doing that? Well, here's why. Look at that stupid metal in there. One of our viewers is actually wrestling with this whole thing right in here, trying to get this out so he can put in clear, clear cab glass. But my particular driver is breaking all the rules and says screw the cops I'm going dark so he's leaving in the back black cab glass and uh, just gonna hopefully miss getting a ticket and then I don't have to jack with that Ugh, yuck okay anyhow so here's how you do one of these s-series trucks number one you gotta take it off the frame and then you're gonna cut the frame about an inch back from the cab and they're all different, by the way. Let me just show you. Well, no, they're not all different, but some of them are different. Some of them don't have as much frame to take off. So this one you see is about three quarter inch or so. This one's about an inch. So I take all I can get uh, when I cut. So I cut this basically in front of the rear axles, okay, on the Ertl. I don't even have the rear axles to show you. Then... You got to take a Dremel or a file or some sort of sander, and I'm using 3 16 by 3 30 seconds rectangular tubing. This is brass. You could use styrene if you have it. But uh, I like brass, so I use it. You can use, I don't care what you use, but this is what I'm using uh, 3 16 by 3 32. You can buy this on Amazon, Hobby Link, any hobby store. Uh, I happen to. This is about the one thing in Dodge City I can buy because this is about the only thing local I can find except paint. Um, so I buy this at True Value. It's just a hardware store. Anyways, you want to make sure you got to grind that frame down a lot. And this thing's going to be, golly, I don't know, 7 sixteenths. I don't know. It's freaking tall. So you gotta, you got to take a ton of die cast off this frame before this is going to fit over it. Now, I'm not saying this is the only way to do it. This is the way I do it. And this is the way I, I, I get good. I get the results I want. Okay. So you're going to do that on both sides, just like so. And you'll notice I put in some holes here for hand grabs, which I will bend and install later. Okay. I have tried to drill holes. I, well, I haven't tried. I have drilled holes for mirrors, which this will have like this one. This one, I just happened to get the holes right, but it seems like more often than not, 
you can kind of see here where my drill bit slipped off of that edge and you know it left a nasty hole and then this one I busted that so it didn't even make it in there so yes you can put holes and drill holes in here when this is all stripped down you know you want to do this when it's painted of course uh, anyway but on this one I just decided you know I'm just gonna glue them right to the side and that'll just it'll just be simple okay now you're saying Eric you already did this why are you not using it well that's a great question on the real truck I'm modeling this grill is actually closer to the real one and matter of fact this is painted up the same colors as the real one I bought this from uh, Harvester 850 on Shapeways, pardon me. So this is a 3D printed. It cost, I believe, six bucks. And so uh, I wanted the, the more accurate grill for this particular truck. That's why I, this is, I'm holding this in my hand. However, reuse the stock Ertl if it makes you happy. Okay? Yeah, you can do that. There's no worries on that. And then if you use this, you'll have to come up with your own front bumper and things like that. But you can see, that's pretty darn cool. It works well. So, you will have to, I, I had to go in here and sand a bit off these corners for this to fit well in into the die cast. So I had to sand on this corner here, this edge, and this edge right here. Okay? And then what I did was I mask off the headlight area on both sides uh, with tape and then I spray painted this red and then I took black paint with a toothpick and came in here with that toothpick and touched up all these insets on the grill with black paint on a toothpick yeah yeah oh and then uh, okay so and then white paint here with another toothpick because I'm out of uh, what did I use Oh, I used something. I forget what I used. But anyways, it was white paint on a little foam brush, tiny foam brush around here. And then uh, chrome, Molotow chrome paint pen for the lights. Okay. So it was a multi-step process to get this bad boy to work. And then I need to take some white paint around this edge. But now that I have it all sanded and everything fits, I can do the white paint on the edge. Okay. And wouldn't you know it, when I'm ordering crap, I only ordered two, one of these instead of two. Duh. God, ticked me off. So the other one's in the mail. Go figure, huh? Okay, so what we can do here is, because the grill is separate, it can go on anytime, we'll go ahead and assemble the rest of this cab. Okay, so I'm reusing this part of the Ertl truck just to make my life simple. So what I did was I cut the, I cut the stock grill and bumper off, okay? And then I dip this in lacquer thinner just to get any grease from my fingers and weird crap in the air off of it. Dipped it in lacquer thinner, wiped it down real well, primed it, painted it black. Some of these come black, this one wasn't. The tanks are about accurate to the real one actually, so I'm reusing those. And so yeah, so, and the reason to do this this way is because uh, then your front axles and this die cast here all match a little bit better. I have actually, I have one. Let me show you real quick. Okay. And think about this. I've actually taken uh, one of these Ertl cabs and I put this, see this is a whole DCP frame here. This is an unstretched DCP frame that I had and I mounted this uh, Ertl cab on it and you can see in here I had to cut that die cast out right here you can see how I cut that die cast out and it's actually resting on the spindle on that frame you can kind of see whoop sorry about that so you can kind of see in there how that's resting on that frame let me see there you go right there there's the spindle there's the die cast that's setting on that spindle. Okay. 
You can do that if you want. I don't necessarily recommend it. It was a lot of extra hassle that I don't know that you gain a whole lot. And I don't know, did I even, oh, yeah, and then I ended up having to put a solid axle in there anyway. I think I broke something, I don't remember. I did that one a few years ago. So for my money and my time and effort, and for this client, I'm leaving this all stock. Basically, this whole front end is, is stock. And then, oh, and one other thing. These are Canada Dakota front end floats, or floats, front end buds. I think these look way better than the, than the DCP buds, which this version one has on it. I think, and actually, these look much closer to the real truck than the DCPs do. Yeah, you know, they're just really no comparison. They're pretty cool. So those uh, forgot six or eight bucks an axle, um, but they're in Canada Dakota's uh, Shapeway store. Okay. Now I did. You've got this post right here from the original cab. Okay. Okay, and then I cut this grill off, so I left that hole right here. Okay. That way I can kind of snap that into place a little bit and then everything else kind of comes together naturally, okay? Now, I do not fully appreciate how far this fender is above the wheel. On the real truck that I'm modeling, that shit, that gap, I mean, this fender should be down quite a ways. But... That presents a whole nother set of challenges. I just, ah. So what I did was I sent my client, I actually I sent him pictures of uh, a couple of trucks like this I have, and I said, hey, here's the deal. This is what it's gonna look like at the end. Are you cool with it? He said, yes, okay, so off we go. All right, here's where the DCP part of this build comes in. You'll see that I'm using, a, this is off of a DCP dry van. You can occasionally buy these on eBay. I believe, I believe, I believe um, DC Toy Trucks has some of these for like five bucks. Uh, so basically, Dean must have come up with a whole bunch of vans and salvaged off the this rear axle assembly and junked the rest of the van. I don't know uh, where he came up with them. Don't care. All I know is I like to buy them. And on this... You'll notice this is one that's untouched. It's factory. It's too wide. And I'll show you. It's too wide. No walkie. See? No walk. All right. Doesn't work. Anyway, you're going to have to take your Dremel or something like this. And narrow that up. Just like so. You can see I used my sander because I got a little carried away. Okay, so that kind of gives you an idea that you're going to have to take all this and make it fit your rectangular tubing. Just like so. Okay? So, that's how that's going to work. And then you can, then it all slides together. Okay. Now, how long do you make that stretch? Easy money right there. That's how long you make it. If you're using my kind of integrated system here, this, the hoist, and the bed all work together to make this one beautiful package right here. See, it all works together and then you just set it right there on your truck once your frame is and everything's prepared. Okay, let's go ahead and glue some stuff here before I forget and then don't glue stuff. Okay. So, just using my Handy Max Cure Ultra Thick, it's in my, you guessed it, my Amazon store in, on my website and also on my Rock and H Facebook page. So you can go over there and buy it, and then I get a little commission, and I'm happy. I mean, I'll be happy if you don't buy it, but gosh, you can buy it, and then then everyone's happy. All right. Oh, for the love of monkeys. Oh, for crying out loud, Eric. Quit pushing it together. A little bit of glueage right there, see? See how I did that? Pretty cute, huh? 
Okay. And then we're going to put some right here just because it makes us happy and we like it. Oh, let me get you in the shot. How do you like that? Can't even see it. I'm selfish that way. Okay. I mean, why not buy it? Yeah, hello. Yeah, duh. Carson's on the money. Oh, oh, and my second favorite product in the whole wide world, Instaset. Yeah. You'll fall in love, I'm telling you. You'll write me fan mail as soon as you buy Instaset and use it with this MaxiCure Ultra Thick. Okay, so we got this kind of set and ready to go. Then we're going to glob around a little bit of glue in here. You don't need a whole lot because guess what? You made it pretty tight. So it doesn't take a whole lot. And whoa, holy cow, who's getting carried away? Man, craziness over here. Craziness. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing over here. You know, well wait, here, here. We're leaving something a little undone, don't you think? Nobody called me out on this? There's 25 of you watching. No one said, hey, dude, cover up that junk. Oh my gosh, it's terrible. Black paint pen I bought at Hobby Lobby. Oh, one of the other four things I can buy in Dodge City, black paint pen. So I can buy rectangular tubes, some brass, some aluminum pipe, paint pens. That's about it. And then everything else I'm buying on Amazon and Hobby Link and whoever else sells what I need. I will end up putting a little taste of glue on that axle too, just so you know. Uh, I'm just moving along. Okay, so what was that? Lucas says, does it make the glue in it cure really fast? Yes. Yes, it will change your life. It's the only reason I can do some of these videos and do what I do so fast is because I use Instaset, which means, boom. I mean, a couple of seconds and you're done. And then we're moving on to the next step. I mean, that, that's it. That's why I can do some of these videos like I do, just because I'm not waiting for glue to dry. Okay, a couple of things for you to keep in mind. Well, I got a wonky wheel. Oh, we're going to straighten that dude out. Yeah. I'll straighten that out later. Um, these frame rails on your Ertl are a little bit narrower than your DCP rear here. Okay, no worries. No worries. Don't get excited. We can handle it. Yeah, it's been nose in a little bit, just like I did. Okay. Now watch this. Watch this. Whew. That's how it's going to set right on there nice and gorgeous. Okay. Uh, Matt says, beer is in abundance in Dodge City. You know, there's been a couple times I've had a few guys out here in the shop, and we've tried to drink all the beer in Dodge City. We failed miserably. Okay, this is one of this is my hoist that I uh, 3D printed. It's in my store. Um, you can buy this. Uh, I think it's 11 bucks or something. I have a video on uh, Rockin' H TV showing you how to... Uh, uh oh, well, we got a little trouble there. Uh, I don't want to move. Showing you how to assemble this, okay? And then um, I painted this because I didn't want the white pins to show that I used to put it all together. And then I used my Molotow Chrome paint pen to uh, give the ram some color so it looks like a, you know, ram. Ah, just drink a beer and those frame rails won't look crooked at all. Yeah, there you go. You nailed it, Carson. Okay. Sorry, I got a little... I, I was pretty generous with my paint and anyways, the parts just kind of got sticky, stuck together. So, I had to, you know, fix that real fast. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go into any detail on the hoist because there's a video out there showing you how to do it already. So you can go out there and hunt that down and uh, and that'll answer your questions there. That paint kind of fill in one of my holes here. I'm just wallering that out a bit. Okay, no worries there. Okay, I'm going to be using 1.3 mil rod right there to assemble my hoist to the frame. 
Okay. And you'll probably see me monkey this all up because, you know, that's normally what happens when I do these videos. You know, everything works swimmingly well when no one's watching. And then I get on camera and then it just, it's like the whole world vomits and hates me. Okay. When in doubt, get a 16th inch bit in there and just kind of... Oh, yeah, I didn't like that, did you? Now it's going to fit. Boy, there's a bunch of inappropriate jokes about this rod and the hole and not quite fitting. Ah, I won't go there. Okay. Show us that service truck. Yeah, I'll do that. That's a project my son started working on. He was whining about not having any money, and I said, you know, I got a guy that says, I want my service truck. Actually, a fellow Kansan. Uh, he's starting a wheat cutting crew out by Sharon Springs. Anyway, he bought something else from me and showed me a picture, sent me a picture of his service truck, and I said, Matt, here you go. I said, we can probably make... I'll probably get you 200 bucks for that service truck if you want to do it. I said, since you're a beginner, I didn't quote him. Uh, I said, you're not going to get a premium, but you'll uh, you'll get a good learning experience. And boy, what a learning experience that's been. <laughs> that's kind of funny. I forget. You know, I just take for granted how much I've learned over the... Yeah. And teaching you guys is fairly easy because I'm just going through the motions here. Not motions, but... You know, I kind of got to show you, it, it be very detailed, because you're watching, and, and to, on the replay, you kind of got to understand my vocabulary and what I'm saying and everything. Well, when he's out here in the shop, I found I'm not the best teacher with my kids. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so I said, hey, cut that frame down. So he cut the frame down, so we burned up one frame because he cut it too short. <laughs> so I had another Peterbilt frame around. I said, all right, now cut this one. And I thought it was explicit. I was not, because he cut that one too short, too. <laughs> and so I had to really work on that. Anyhow, <laughs> so I've been helping him helping him on that one. It's been good. Okay. Okay, here we go. So that's how that integrated hoist and everything works. Sorry it took so long for me to put together for you. But uh, we got it. Okay, what time is it? 8.53. I got to hustle. Holy cow, we're running out of time. Okay. What I've done here is I'm cutting those pins pretty darn just right up to that plastic right there. And depending on what truck you use, um, you may... Well, I won't get into that. Won't get into that. Um, this one is going to work fine. Okay, so there we go. Bloop. Yeah, I was about ready to word vomit on you a bunch of information that's not necessary for this particular show. Okay. And you saw how I put this box together last week, so we don't need to go through that. So that's Rockin' HTV 71. This is 72 where we're actually mounting the box. Okay. Ta -da. Wow, that's that's not right. Someone didn't mount their hoist their rats. Okay, okay, this isn't gonna work. So I'm gonna have to do a little surgery to make that frame set straight. See, this is what happens sometimes. Okay, let's use the other box. See how this one works. Lined up and gorgeous. Okay, and don't fight short pins. This plastic's too too cheap to fight. Just yeah, there we go. Here we 
Here we go. Whoop. All right, backing out. Dude, Carson's pointing out how crooked my thingy was. Well, that one's not. Look at there. That's gorgeous. Ha! Okay. So what you're going to do then, um, my hoist actually comes with a, uh, a, a pivot point, a top pivot point. That's really kind of cool. Um, but on these boxes, the way I've, I've just found over time that it, I use just a piece of uh, C-shaped styrene because then I can move that pivot point farther away from, from the bed, if that makes sense. And, uh, and this just seems to work a lot easier. So that's, that's why you're, you're seeing me do that. Christopher says, why not use brass for pins? Well, Chris, the styrene's just so darn easy to work with. You know, the brass, you got to cut it. And then, um, you just, I mean, I just cut that with my, with my X-Acto knife. I mean, it was, it was that simple. Uh, you just can't do that with the uh, brass. It, I mean, you can do it if you want. I used to actually use quite a bit of brass until I found styrene and my life changed and I heard angels sing. Okay, we have our truck here. Okay, I just used just a little bit of glue here just to hold that to the bed. And then once this is all mounted, what I'll do is I'm actually going to raise this up. And then what I will do is, oh, come on, let go. So what I'll do is I'll actually raise this up and then I'm going to put more glue around it so when a guy operates it, it stays there. Yeah, see, that's what happens when you go to do a demo. Okay, no worries. There. So, like I said, well, yeah, genius. Okay, then you can glue this to the frame of the truck, just like so. So what you'll do then at this point right here is you'll run a little bit of glue here and here. And I generally stay away. So my, as you can see, I'll run, I'll just show you right here with this dry fit. I usually run glue here and then right up to about where the hoist is going to rest. Let me get you in a better shot there. Um, so I'll, I'll just do glue here for about three quarter of an inch from the back of the cab. And then I'll run glue back over here near the rear axles. And the reason for that is, is I have had on, on occasion, it hasn't happened very often, but it's happened often enough, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, uh, if I put glue over in here where the hoist is, sometimes if you use too much, it'll dribble over the side and then glue your hoist together, and that stinks. Or I mean, it, it glues this to the side of the frame, and that blows. Because then you got to wiggle your knife in there and scratch up all your paint and bleh. So I avoid all that just by not putting that stupid glue near the hoist, okay? That's that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So that's that's how you're gonna do that. Okay? Now uh to finish this off you can come in and put drive line in. I mean I've got a couple of spots for hand grabs. I got exhaust to put on this yet, not a big deal. That's all easy stuff. Um, you can put my 3D printed rollover tarp frame on it, or you can, you know, do whatever you do. Um, yeah, but this is how this is going to look once it is together. Okay, that's it. So that's how you're going to get all this done for your drain truck. Okay, we had a request to see. It's 9 o'clock, guys, so I'm not going to keep you. How much glue, he says. How much glue? Um, well, do I really want to do that just yet? I don't know. Okay. Well, I don't want to leave you guys hanging since you ask. All right. Watch this. Okay, now you can see how much glue I'm going to use. I used about a half-inch taste right there. And then my hoist is all going to be in front of this.
and you can come back and add glue after the fact as well. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that dude is square on the frame and it looks pretty darn good there. Oh my gosh, my box is not even square. Holy smokes, that's terrible. Ah, it must have moved on me. Not a problem. We'll fix it. There we go. Whew. That looked the shady side of ugly. Yowzers. And we're going to move that over just a well, I don't have something square here, I'd say, don't you think? Hang on here, guys. We had something wrong in River City. I do not have something quite right here. And I think I know what my problem is right now. That's it, right there. I ran that out just a bit. Oh, shit. Well, that didn't work. Hmm. Wasn't that fun? Okay, yeah, no worries. We got this. Well, that's okay. Um, I need a tool. Where's my tool? See, 9 o'clock. Should have stopped at 9. Oh, well. No worries. We got this. I said in a couple of other shows, I mean, long, long ago, someone says, why do you let your nephews play with your trucks? <laughs> I said, well, if they break anything, I'll just fix it. It ain't a big deal. Okay. Whew. Okay, see now we now we own it. Okay. See? Now it's square. All right. Oop. What we're going to do is make sure all of that is Okay. Okay, now we're going to put this on. Okay. Oh, Lordy. Look at how much better that is. Whoo. Okay. All right. Now we're ready. So you saw how much glue I put on the frame. And then you can always come back and where I would recommend you go. If you wanted more glue on this thing, you stick it right on the inside of this frame right here. I mean, raise the box, of course. Raise the box. Put some glue in here along the inside on both sides. Bam. And you got it. And that's the way you're going to do that, okay? Now, what I recommend you do while this is drying is stick a little weight in the back. Okay, I'm actually going to take another look at that. Oh, it looks like we're getting... Come on in. Hang on. We're still alive. But come on in. Okay. There you go. That's the way that dude's going to look. Got a little gap right back here, but that's not going to be a big deal. Okay. All right, guys. That's how you're going to put this bad boy together. Kyler says he's never seen one with a red grill. That's because the farmers that owned this place up in Indiana, they painted their grill red and then put the black in it. So that's just the way their truck is, and that's what they did. So there you go. Um, right. And then some... Uh, Cooper uh, asked me about this particular service truck. This is a 359 service truck out in Sharon Springs, I believe. Uh, we basically just cut the grill out over here like that. Um, kind of just haphazardly put this together. It, it's coming together. It's got silver fenders. It's got black peat ovals, and I have those. Um, this is about... Oh, these... Uh, Pipes need to be shortened. They're, they're still bevels, but they just need to be shortened because they're only about a foot above the cab. Um, this box is pretty much what they have on it. And uh, yeah, I forget what their name is on the side. I don't know if we were going to put that on there. Um, but this is my son's first paid gig, and I'm kind of helping him through it. You can see here, we spliced that frame. That's why we have a big gap over here is because I don't have any more peat frames. <laughs> Uh, so even though this one was too short, I kind of monkeyed in there a little shim and 
a G, you know, just black, blah, 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 blah. We made this thing work. That's really what happened. So even though it's not a perfect replica of this guy's truck, um, for a first time out of the gate, paid gig, it's not a bad deal. It's it's coming together. Uh, but yeah, that's what this is. So just a 359 Pete going together for a fella who's uh, starting a harvest crew out here in Kansas. So that's that. Okay, guys. Um, whoop. Now let me get you out. There you go. Okay, hopefully you got something out of this show. You watched me fail bigger than life, but also we made it work. So this is how you're going to make your uh, grain truck out of using a DCP rear end and a Ertl uh, S-Series truck. <sighs> Hecklers. What are you going to do? I guess I could kick him out. He is 19. Okay, so anyways, if you like this video, please leave comments and uh, thumbs up and all that other good stuff. Make sure you share them and get them out in the world. I'm going to put this in his eye right here. <laughs> we will see you next week. Uh, I think I'm going to have a really special show for you about a 3D printing company in China. <sighs> yeah, 3D printing company in China I'm experimenting with. I should have some, uh, I should have a crust buster drill, some grain beds, and some other things uh, all in plastic. And what cost me, would have cost me about 360 bucks on Shapeways, I paid $87 for in China. We're going to see what we're going to get. I have no idea what this is going to be like. So get out of here, you goofball. <laughs> Anyways, thanks a lot, guys, and we'll catch you later. Bye.